come do whatever you want to me because Shut up. I'm tied up. So there's nothing I can do about it. Oh my goodness. That's probably, oh my God. Oh my God. It's probably like an Indian sewer. Ah, ah, that's gotta be gross, dude. Oh, don't put that image in my head. I do have a fear of losing viewers because of success. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? I'm afraid I'll be dead. Then do something. Do I choose health or do I choose money? Girl, I, as a person, am nowhere near as bad as hater nation. And I say that with my chest, literally with my chest. I did not create this community at all. It's fat phobia. Yeah, yeah. I know this is like an intro, but this is... <laughs> Some of the funniest stuff I've seen in a long time when it comes to Amber Lynn. Why does she never take accountability for anything she does? She just sits there and complains so often. How the hell did you not create the community given the fact that the community is based around you? How does that even work? That does not how that, that can't, that cannot be how that works, dude. And like, I love that she just blames everybody. Like she's sitting there going like, oh yeah, in 10 years, I'm gonna die. And then Becky's like, then do something about it. Yeah, Amber, do something about it. Damn, man. Oh, is, is, this is this is hilarious. Once again, your girl has run out of ideas for content and has asked her audience to ask her questions for a video. But let's be real, these are questions she's asked herself. I've condensed the original 31 minute video into the somewhat interesting questions. So let's go. Let's do it. I really try to choose questions that people have been asking a lot of and questions that I haven't really answered before. Does your mom remember how she found out you were gay and can she share her version slash side of the story? So that's actually something that me and my mom have recently talked about. I wonder if Mama Lynn knows Amber's entire coming out story was stolen from Casey. What? Um, today I'm gonna tell you guys my coming out story. This video is about my coming out story. My mom found out I liked girls because I wrote a, a love note no. to Lucy. <sighs> I was writing a letter to my friend about her saying how I do like this girl duh, 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 and I don't know how to tell my mom. Yeah, Amber, it, why is she talking like this, dude? She's talking like she's 10 years old or something. Like, what is this like under breath speaking like, yeah, we were, you know, I really had this crush on this girl and like we were really loving each other or whatever. Like, just stay with your fucking chest. Speak up. Speak up. You know, but again, Amber looks so small here, but I know she's not actually small at all. I know that she's incredibly overweight here, but this is like from years ago before she gained like a lot of weight, like a ton, a ton and ton and ton. Like, what was she like 300 pounds here? Mom, I don't know how to tell my parents. And I left it in my pants and she went to do laundry and well, the notes, I guess I never ended up giving it to my friend and I left it in my pants pocket. And my That's crazy, dude. Okay, like maybe the first part of this story was like somewhat believable because it's like pretty generic. But having this particular part be completely the same... That's crazy, Amber. Well, you, why couldn't you come up with your own reason of why you decided to be gay, right? I mean, I, again, she was probably gay for her whole life or whatever, right? But her coming out story should be at least somewhat authentic. It could have just been like, yeah... I was lesbian. I always knew I was lesbian, but I never really put too much thought into being lesbian. And I just kind of told my mom one day, like, yeah, guess what? I eat vagina and I do it recreationally. I love it. It's all in my mouth. It's especially the ones with the yeast infections. Get the bread all over my throat. I love that shit. You could have said that. You could have said that you, had, you know, you like the yogurt or whatever. It would have been, it would have been much, much better than somebody back checking the video. Isn't she like, she was dating that person, right? Mom did my laundry. She found it. So... You can only imagine what happened there. And I I was trying to lie to her at first. I finally said, yeah, but I did the safe route. At least I believe it was a safe route and I came out as bisexual. I had explained to her that no, I don't just like women. I am bisexual. And I actually have- Wow, that's actually super cringy, dude. I know that's like an edited version of whatever she, you know, she said in the actual video. But the fact that she feels the need so heavily, like she, why can't she come up with her own story? I get it. It's a lot easier to take it. But it doesn't even make sense because it's like, it's supposed to be your story. It's not even some... <sighs> Whatever, bro. Whatever. I was like, mom, do you want to share your side? She said she would, but she doesn't want to like physically be on camera right now. So I think it would just be like her voice or something. But I think that'd be fun to like hear the mother's side to a coming out story. I don't think it's going to work since like that entire story that you just said was a complete lie. So I guess you would have to give her the rundown on how exactly she found out. Like, what? what is this whole line of dialogue that you have to tell your mom about how you came out. Does your mom really even care that much about you being homosexual? Do people in general care anymore about being homosexual? That's, that's a question. 
leave it down below in the comment section. I'm actually interested. I know so many people think it's like powerful or whatever to come out as like gay nowadays. Bro, everybody is gay. Like every single person. You're gay. You know, everybody's gay right now. And it's, I don't, I don't have a problem with people being gay. It's not like it is like back 20 years ago where if somebody said you were gay, it was like a sign of disrespect. And they were basically saying it wasn't really even gay. Like people were just, if somebody called you gay, it was them basically saying that you were a bad person. But nowadays, if somebody called you gay, you'd be taken as a compliment. You go like, oh, so I'm like a really tolerant individual. Somebody that's like super accepting of like everybody. Oh, wow. Really? We have our own month. You know that? Like, I don't think many people even care anymore if you are or are not gay. Uh, maybe like eight years ago, maybe eight years ago, but not anymore. Like nobody cares. So I don't know. I guess it's super powerful for Amber, but she's been in like so many relationships at this point. Like I don't really even care about her homosexuality. I think a lot of people could actually use that. Have you considered cutting your hair? Losing weight. Have you considered losing weight? Why is not a, why is that not a question? To a coming out story. I think a lot of people could that actually use that. overline is crazy by the way. Have you considered cutting your hair shorter to help it recover. And then also like the overline is inconsistent. Like there's more on one side here compared to the other side. Like I get it. Everybody wants bigger lips nowadays, having more voluptuous and, uh, uh, you know, more detail, more bigness when it comes to the lip, lip capacity. And I'm, I'm lip, I'm top lip challenged. And I know that bigger lips are like super good, but dude, overlining the lips like this is, it just looks weird. So yes. But not the way that some of you suggest. Some of you are like, go up to here to your shoulder. I would not Never recommend gonna that. Never going to happen. So I cut my own hair and it already feels so much better. So Ooh. here I am showing you a clip of my hair from my last. It's so much better, dude. So, 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 so much better. Man, Amber has such nice hair. I, I, I just like sometimes I gaze upon Amber and I go, she has such nice, generally good speaking. Like speaking, speaking about like actual good properties on a body. Amazing hairline, right? Thick, coarse hair. Her bone structure doesn't seem that bad. There's just the fact that she's carrying around like 500 pounds. <laughs> Crazy. She has great eyebrows. I mean, granted, she doesn't have a lot of lips. I don't even know what she would look like if she was thinner. But Amber is not a bad looking person. It just sucks so much camel dicks that instead of taking, she's 33 right now, right? As a time of, if you're seeing this video in like 20, 28 or something like that, she's 20, I'm um, sorry, 33 at the time of making me, me making this video. It just sucks so much dick knowing that our girl could easily be, I wouldn't say a 10, but she could easily be up there in terms of the numbers if she chose to lose weight. Like she doesn't have a bad baseline. It's just, she's just really, really overweight and obese. And it takes a very particular type of person to like really, really want to date somebody that's obese, or it's just like a fetish for you and you want to date somebody, or it could just be that Amber is Amber. You know, at this point, I wouldn't even be surprised that people are just trying to date her because she's Amber. She probably has a large fan base of people that just go, I want to be with her because she's Amber Lynn, right? In the same way that you don't really care about that person. You just kind of want to be with the idea of that person. So I wouldn't even be surprised about that. And I think she can improve tremendously, physically speaking, not even like the health capacity wise, on the amount of beauty she would emanate off her body. Uh, I mean, but then again, you would know all about that beauty, wouldn't you? Since, you know, you're beautiful. Vlog, and then I'm showing you my hair today where, no, it's not perfect, but it just looks. Is this like a part of the outfit or did this just stretch like that? Feels so much healthier. I am very glad that I decided yeah, it to looks really, looks take good. a pair of kitchen scissors and just chop, 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 chop. <laughs> come on, don't do her like that. It didn't come out that bad. It looked all right. Never get discouraged from losing weight because of your diagnosis of a lipedema. Since lipedema is not curable and it cannot go away. I hear too many people talking about this as like an excuse not to lose weight because they have a chronic illness. Therefore, there's nothing you can do about that. It's such a bad way of looking at anything in life because that'd be like a guy with no legs and somebody going like, because you have no legs, you know, you'll never be able to run, walk, do all this stuff. Right. And you just kind of go, yeah. I guess I'm just fucked. I guess I'll just, just stay home all day and just do nothing perpetually for my the rest of my life. No, you can still improve your life immeasurably if you decided to do other things. You don't have to walk if you don't got legs. In the same way that Amber will never be able to get rid of her lipedema and things such and so forth. It is a chronic illness. It is something that she, can, she has to live with for the rest of her life. But that doesn't mean that your life can't improve immeasurably through the realm of weight loss. I'm sick of people that are like very, very obese. Amber weighs 500 pounds, okay? 500 and some change pounds. And... I get it. You have lipedema, but like, t dude, you're obese. That that has a lot to do with the fact that you're fat. You you eat too much. I mean, we know that. You literally have videos dedicated to you just binging for hours and hours and hours. So obviously, naturally speaking, the lipedema is a problem and you're not going to get rid of it, but you can most definitely lose weight and that would help you out immeasurably. 
yes, I do get discouraged because I know that there is a large portion of my body that will not go away with weight loss. Yeah, but a large portion of your body will go away with weight loss and it could alleviate a lot of the problems that you're dealing with right now that you may be contributing to just because you have a lip, you have lipedema, which sure, I'm sure you have problems because of that. But like, dude, if you weigh 500 pounds, are we contributing the all the hundred, all the 500 pounds of lipedema? No, obviously fucking not, dude. You should be losing like 200, 300 pounds. You, you'd be good around 200 pounds, granted. That'd be crazy for me to say that. Like Amber would probably look amazing at 200 pounds. I mean, granted, that's still like very, very, very obese and very oh, bad for you. But 200, like really put that in perspective. Amber would be extremely healthy at 200 pounds compared to where she's at right now, which is 500 and some change pounds, right? No other person on the planet could say that. That is such a crazy thing to say. But for Amber, it, 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 would be, it would be a drastic step up. That's hard for me to absorb. I will always have like a disfigured body. I'll never have the body that I want. Yes, this is true. Um, but, you know, the sad part is like lipedema is real deal, uh, a condition that affects mostly fat people. And sure, people that are thin can also get this particular type of condition, 100%. But, uh... For somebody like Amber, I wouldn't be surprised if that was all attributed to the fact that she's obese. And But you know what the funny thing is? Even though she's claiming this to be a problem because she's obese. I mean, sorry. She's claiming this to be a problem because of the fact that she has this, like, illness of lipedema. Most of the problem here is the fact that she's obese. Like, the lipedema is obviously hurting her. But it's not just that. It's the obesity. You can't just sit there and, sit, and tell people that it's the, that's the solid reason. No, it, it, you're fat. That's the issue here. But I'm also so far past that like vein, oh, I just want to look better. It's it's all about health. Wait. Dude, <laughs> sure. It's all about health. But I, I mean, that should always be the baseline, but there's nothing wrong with wanting to look better. There's nothing wrong with having a little bit of extra like, I look good today. I look so magnificent, even though that you, you you think that you're obese and things like that. One thing I've like totally noticed about Amber is that she'll sit there and she'll say this, hogwash, by the way, and then she'll do a full face of makeup. A full face of makeup, bedazzling the eyebrows, bedazzle like these, these rhinestones or whatever. Rhinestones haven't been in since like 2004, okay? I'm going to keep it a buck. If your name's not Britney Spears and you're not from 2004, you shouldn't be doing that, okay? You remember when girls were like bedazzling their vaginas or whatever, dude? That was like a super common thing at one point where women were um, putting rhinestones on their vaginas, like a whole kit that you can order on those like telemarketer shows. Like call in today and you'll be able to get your two night, your twenty four ninety nine, and call up right now and you'll get the second set for free. And to top it off, that's not it. We're going to throw in this luxury cloth, right? And then you call up and you order that shit and they send you like a whole bunch of rhinestones. Half of them don't even fit in the fucking device that they use to fucking whatever. And you're just sitting there just rhinestoning up, you're bedazzling your vagina. And I don't even know of a scenario where that's even appropriate. Like you think you're about to have sex that night and you just whip out your vagina, it's shiny. And you're the guy's just going like, oh yeah, we're about to have sex. What the fuck is that? What happened to you? Why does your vagina look like that? You know, took it to K Jewelers or something like that, man. I don't know. But uh, rhinestones have not been in in a long time. Anyway. Vain. Oh, That's I one just... thing I've noticed about, noticed about Amber is like she seems to be stuck in like an era between I would say 20, 20, 2004 to like 2011. Like that's where she is, dude. And you could tell from the choker. She was in that scene era. You know what I'm talking about where everybody was like all American rejects and Fallout Boy and Avril Lavigne and Skater Boy, See You Later Boy type attitudes. I just want to look better. It's, it's all about health. Wait, so remember when she constantly blame her weight gain on lymphedema and lipedema? She'd openly admit that losing weight would help these things. It would. But now, losing weight wouldn't help to improve these things and what she's more worried about is how her body looks aesthetically? The specialist also recommended compression treatments that Amber has yet to follow through with. But isn't that... Really? Like, can you imagine... What, hold up, bro. Amber's going to the doctor and the doctor's telling her, telling them to do... Because, like, what they'll do is they'll wrap your legs when you have lipedema, right? Because, like, you have a lot of fluid in your legs and things like that. So, it's, like, really good to, like, compress that stuff down. So, that way you don't have to worry about it as much. But is she not doing that at all? Like, not not, not even in the slightest? I, I would have people, oh, you have lymphedema. It's so gross. Really, like, I don't have lymphedema. Like, stop being rude. <laughs> I've always, what? like I'm talking always, have had really big calves, obviously. Okay, so this is like, oh my god, dude, that is something serious, bro. 
I can't believe that people can walk around like this, dude. It just hurts me so deeply when I see people like have no morals or have absolutely no respect for themselves to walk around at 500 plus pounds. And that maybe, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe I'm like looking at it from this perspective of like a privileged standpoint because I've never had that kind of weight on my body before. So I can't like look at it and that's like, you know what I'm saying? Like maybe I'm tunnel visioned, but seeing Amber in this size, dude, and seeing the body shape, the inability to walk, the having the trouble walking up steps, not being able to do anything, physically speaking, that's like really demanding or even menially demanding. I just cannot look at that and go, how do you, how do you respect your body? How does that even happen? You know what I'm saying? Amber takes care of so many things, right? She always has a clean house. I'll give her that. Her hair is always looking nice. Like she takes good care of her hair, but like, the body, dude. Like, how can you not care about yourself to such a degree? In life, I feel like the things that matter the most are health and family. Health and, like, friends and family. Those should be the things that you care about the most in your life. Because otherwise, like, people say money is the most important thing, which I think is bullshit. I think people that chase, like, the, the hustler mentalities, people that go around chasing the bag constantly, I think leaves to a meaningless life because eventually when you do get the bag you have nothing right at least if you have friends family and things such so forth it's always fulfilling for you i just struggled to see people like whenever people tell me that they want to have these nice houses nice cars and all this stuff like i've never once thought about that one time i bought that phone you know what i'm saying like i never celebrated that that time i bought my car maybe for like three or four days like I had that nice car or maybe you you bought that phone and you were like this is cool right but I never really put a lot of value onto those things because it never was valuable it's more valuable to have the ability to make and have communication with your friends celebrating things with your friends like you know sometimes people say these these terrible disgusting things but ultimately it should be about these communication factors like that time that you and your wife went on that date or that time that you and your friends had that basketball game and it led to that and it was fun and you guys had all these beautiful moments nobody was at the end of their life and was like oh i want to reflect on all the great things about my life that time i bought the newest iphone 15 that had the the the, the usb c charger nobody ever said that nobody ever said that okay what they're gonna say is like I remember that time where it was me and Joseph, we were at the basketball game and we were shooting hoops and we had that real long in-depth conversation about where our lives are going to go and it ended up being awesome. Like that's what you hear. Or that time you proposed to your wife or that time that you got married or that time that you had kids. You know what I'm talking about? Nobody ever talks about fucking having cars and things like that. So whenever I see people preaching money, which is Amber, like at the very beginning of this clip, like I, I could either be healthy or rich, be healthy because money is good you should have money like if you're making ten thousand a year obviously shoot for a higher fucking tax bracket but it's at some point it becomes meaningless and it, it, especially if you have no health to, to, to even facilitate for the money that you're going to be spending like if you're sitting there on death's door consistently and you're rich what is the money going to do for you you have no fucking reason to even have the money at all if you're going to die by the time you're fucking 40 right like what are you doing dude so i would always celebrate friends family right and health health should be number one because you can't have any of those other things if you if you die before the times of even like developing those things out so i when i see amber and i see her having this confliction of like money or health always choose health always i don't give a fuck you can make more money but you can't make more health like you have to take what you got and expand on it or like make it last as long as possible it's like your teeth right? Like you're not going to regrow teeth. Like you're like those sharks from that like nineties TV show where they were riding skateboards and motorcycles. No, you just have these teeth that are in your mouth and that's it. And hopefully you can make them last for the remainder of your life. With the weight gain, my legs just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the fact that she's like, you know, okay, here's the thing. Okay. I'm going to get deep for you with you for a second. I remember when I was about 18, maybe actually, I think when I was around 16, I remember going and getting a haircut, right? And I would get the basic black guy haircut. I would get a lineup. Um, this was before fades were like super big. So I just basically like shaved everything and I'd get a lineup. And I remember one time when I was 16 years old, which I would basically do like every six, seven, eight months, I would go get a lineup. I know most black guys go get lineups every two weeks. I know black guys that go get lineups every two weeks, but I, I would never do that because I'm white and that shit's expensive. It's 20 bucks. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. 20 bucks every two weeks. Who the fuck are you getting your haircut that much? Anyway, so I'd go and I got this shit lined up. And I remember looking in the mirror one day and I saw like at the, the tips of my hairline, it was like kind of light, you know, it was kind of like unfavorable light. And I was like, what the fuck is that? And I remember going into school. My friend was like, oh yeah, your barber fucked up your hair at the lines on the sides, but it, it looks good. Right. And I was like, oh, okay. So I, I guess it's just fucked up. 
But then as I started getting older from like, I would say 18, 19, 20, and I started working, dude, my hairline started going back. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, and then I just kind of attributed to it because like my mom had a like a really kind of big forehead and she had those exact same kind of hairline. But my dad had a really, really nice, thick, coarse hairline, even up until his 40. So I just kind of attributed to maybe I got my dad's hairline and a little bit of this. Maybe it's just got to go back and stop. Nah. No, nah, I was living a facade, dude. My hairline was receding. It, you know, it was what it was. I didn't have the thickness, the coarseness that I once did in my in my teen years. But it's okay. It's really good to acknowledge these things early because at least it's better than living a lie, right? Because you keep going all in your day and you keep convincing yourself and trying to tell the people like, no, I'm not receding. I'm not balding, dude. What are you talking about? It's just what it is. Like, I'm not. It's just how my hair is. No, it's not. Stop fucking lying. In the same way that for Amber, when it comes to her legs, dude, it's fucking lipedema, dude. And go to the fucking doctor, get a diagnosis. Stop fucking with me. Your legs are not supposed to be the circumference of, like, a fucking elephant dick. Bigger, and I just never wanted that to be me because of my weight. Because it's like, I ruined my body, and that's, like, my fault. I it is your fault. That's a factual statement. Now, granted, I think a lot of this has to do with her parents. I, I hear this a lot. When you are a child your parents instill values in you and if your parents don't give a fuck about you and they just kind of let you be obese or they just kind of convince you certain things right then you're gonna go along in your life thinking this shit doesn't fucking matter and to a certain degree um it is it is your parents fault but here's the thing when you're an adult it is your job to like break those norms and get out of that like i don't know that conditioning that you were under and it could be harder for some other people hopefully your parents didn't do that and your parents were good people and they you know everybody everybody's human at the end of the day people are going to fuck up your parents are not perfect so um i would always i would always err on the side of forgiveness unless it was really bad but for amber she's an adult she's been an adult for a very long time she's acknowledged it she's self she's self aware of a lot of the issues that she's facing so when i hear her say this right um, it just kind of comes off really, really disingenuous as well, because if Amber is sitting here telling us that she knows that she's fat and that because she's fat, she has destroyed her body in a very physical way. And even to a certain degree internally as well. I mean, she's got cancer from this shit. I kind of look at this and I go, okay, this person is aware they're going to make changes. They're going to do something right for their lives. And they don't. That pisses me off because there are certain people that will tell you these things and they'll, they, they get like. They get a rise, you know, almost kind of like an ego boost from understanding their own traumas and things that they know that they're doing wrong. And they can tell you these things. They can articulate these problems to you. And yet they do nothing about it. I think these people are the fucking worst. If you're going to sit there and sit down with me and tell me, I have these issues. I have these problems. I know what I'm doing wrong. I know I can solve these problems. And you never do. Fuck you. I don't want to talk to you anymore. This is a terror. You're it's not good. All right. Now, some problems, you know, maybe you don't need to fix right away. Maybe you do have like a deadline on things like that. But for somebody like Amber, who's literally obese, personified, OK, squared, you can't just keep telling me that, you know, you have these problems, you know, you destroyed your body, you know, these things are all bad issues for you and do nothing for fucking a decade plus. It's just not cool. I don't care at this point. Like if you're going to keep telling me this stuff. I think this is one of the things that kicked me into high gear with weight loss. You didn't kick. When was this video taken, dude? I can't, uh, the amount of times Amber will say this hogwash and then try to convince herself that she's gonna do something about it now. And then six months later, she just gains more weight ultimately. I just, it's just, it's this Amber cycle. It hurts me so deeply, dude, because I know that it's gonna happen. I know she's gonna say that she's gonna lose weight and that she's finally starting to lose weight. And then six months later, she's gonna get on the scale and go, I'm done, I'm done weighing myself because I gained weight. It was like 40 extra pounds even when I started with. And it's like, it's just, it's so disconcerting. And then when I noticed that I just kept like being and I just kept getting more swollen. I noticed that it kept getting bigger. It is what it is. Like, I did this to myself. Yep. I have to lose weight. So with lymphedema, you can't get rid of it. It's not something that goes away. But with excessive weight loss, it can get smaller and it can yes. help drastically. Yes. And you can also get surgery. Like, I did this to myself. But I've already noticed with the weight that I have lost, it's not as like hard feeling. It's not my fault that I have lipedema. Lipedema is not a problem because I'm fat. Ah, oh, 
Amber is such a unique specimen of human being, dude. How does she stuff her own mouth with her own foot so many times, dude? Like, did, do people, does she not realize that people, like, document her entire life? I can't believe that she can sit there and say this stuff. Be like, you know what? I'm going to take full accountability for all my problems. I gained this weight. It was my fault. I got this lipedema because of the weight gain. It was my fault. And then right after that, you know, I don't know when that video was taken compared to this one. And then sit there and go, you know what? It's not my fault. You know, even in cases where it may not be your fault, it might be really, really important to actually take responsibility for those things. Because even though you don't want to do those things, and even though like you don't have to do those things, it's like taking care of like an elderly parent, or maybe you feel like there's somebody around you that you feel like you have to, um, you're responsible for and things such and so forth. It takes a very powerful person to not do what they want to do and do what they have to do in order to exist in that life, right? It's, it's, it's sometimes the cards that you're dealt are not the ones that you ultimately want, but that's okay because that makes you a stronger person. That makes you somebody that's going to be able to like rise up to the challenges of life, right? I think it's a very weak person for somebody to go, I do whatever I want and I don't care what anybody says. This is the life I want to live. I'm going to do what, you know, like that person to me is very weak. Um, I think that you should have joys in your life, obviously. Life is pretty hard and you're going to go through trials and tribulations. You should obviously enjoy it whenever you can. But that's not an excuse to not take care of people around you and things such and so forth. Like, you know, it is what it is, right? I do have a little bit of lymphedema, but what <laughs> I'm bit. actually experiencing is lipedema. I gain weight if I eat 2,400 calories. Like no one believed me. A lot of you don't believe me when 2400 calories probably is like a lot for a girl like amber if she's 5'3 and she's 33 years old right i mean i don't know when this video was taken we'll just say 30 years old so probably three years ago um 2400 calories actually might be a lot for her i mean now it's probably not in the spectrum of what she usually eats if she's eating like 4,000 calories a day, she's going to lose weight off that 2,400. I mean, let that sink in for a second. She's losing weight off 2,400, but that still is probably too much for her because a lot of women I've met that are smaller, that are like five foot three. I even met some women that are like 4'11", right? It sucks to say this, but a lot of those women are eating a thousand calories, 1300 calories, and they still gain weight from that because they're small people and they don't have a lot of area to fill. And I know, and you know, having good shit in your mouth consistently, that shit, that that's good. I love it. Put it all in my mouth, my throat and my lower back. But sometimes it's just not for you. Sometimes you just not, you're not that guy. You're not the guy to eat 5,000 calories a day and not gain weight. You're just not that person. And I know it sucks, but it is what it is for somebody like Amber, who's five, three, I wouldn't even doubt that 2400 is actually still too much for her to eat, but it's probably okay because she's fucking drastically obese here. So 2400, she will lose weight. If she's eating 4,000 calories a day, I wouldn't even recommend her eating 2400 calories. That seems a little bit drastic. That'd be like if you were eating, that'd be like if you were eating 3000 calories a day and you went on a, like you went down to a thousand calories, that'd be the equivalent. Like that's a drastic change. I would never recommend somebody do that. I think for somebody like Amber, if she's eating like let's say for instance, 4,000 calories, 5,000 calories a day, if she was eating 4,000, I would tell her to go down to like 3,500. And then once she plateaus at that, go down to like 30, sorry, 3,200. And then go down from that to 39, sorry, 33,000, 27, go down in increments of 200 to 300 calories because it's going, you'll lose weight regardless. And the slow and steady is going to be a lot better for somebody like Amber since she has a major problem with eating food. And we know that. And it'd be better for her to maximize the amount of food that she can get out of those calories. And you're going to be able to keep the weight off better instead of like plateauing and being super disconcerned at that because you're only eating a thousand calories and then immediately gained it all back because it was such a drastic calorie deficit and i say that i do gain weight by eating that amount and i don't doubt there was even a section of a time where i was eating like 1700 calories and i was still gaining weight every so like when i hear people say this if, if amber is over 500 pounds and she's eating 2,400 calories a day, she's not gaining weight. I'm going to keep it a buck. And especially if she's eating 1,700 calories and she's still gaining weight, fuck you. What that is is probably like water weight. I don't know how long she was on that deficit for, for her to register that on the scale. Sometimes what people will do is they'll go on these drastic calorie deficits and then they'll go on the scale that next day and they'll go, I gained weight. No, you didn't gain weight. You probably just had a change in your diet and your body was adjusting to the new norm. Maybe you're holding water. You were eating more salt. Things are happening, right? You need to continue doing that for a prolonged period of time. I'm talking about a week, two weeks, and then finally get that result. Because your body has a lot of incremental changes from dieting to dieting, right? It's like trying a new skincare routine. There's a period of your face being fucked up 
because you're going from what you're used to. You're training your face based off this new, like, you're training your face based off what you're using before, and then you move over to this new one. Yeah, dude, it's going to be fucked up because this new one is, like, different from what you did before. It's, like, purging, all right? So you need to go through that time period of having fucked up um, weight gain issues that you think is due to the, the food you're eating, which doesn't make sense, Amber. I mean, what it comes down to is realistically – um, understanding nutrition, you have to understand, obviously, if you're eating 1,700 calories, you shouldn't be fucking gaining weight. What do you think? You're a superhero? No, you're not. Okay. Obviously, Amber, you're, you're, you're losing weight. You're just not doing it in the way that you wish you would. Every single day, no matter what diets you do, no matter how low of calories you gain weight, that is the number one symptom. I've never That's going- not- that's not how that works. I'm not like totally familiar on lymphedema. I haven't like gone through the Wikipedia completely and, you know, read through all this shit on it. Can somebody let me know, can you just eat anything and still gain weight? Like if I, if I sucked on an acorn for 45 minutes and that's all, I, that's the only sustenance I had for that day, but I had lymphedema. Would I gain weight because I sucked on the acorn and I had lymphedema? How does that work? Can somebody please let me know? I'm going to get rid of this, but what I can do to help it and to lose, lose weight. weight the best of my ability is low carb she also man dude amber amber just says something sometimes and you listen to it and you just go what the fuck did you just say look your body i know that there are a lot of people out there that think that oh high protein low carb high fiber whatever the fuck that's fine if you want to do that if you want to do a carnivore diet which is basically just being gay if you want to do that that's fine all meat diets fine whatever you want to do but don't act like your body is going to like utilize these particular foods in a much different way compared to these other foods. The way I like to look at it is like your body is like a wood burning stove. So it doesn't matter what, what type of wood you put in it. You put oak, you put some cedar, you put some acada wood, whatever the fuck you want to put in that shit. If you just give your body acada wood, your body's going to use it. It's just what it is, okay? Now, if you give your body oak and acada, it's going to use it regardless. For somebody like Amber to go on a solid meat diet, I don't think ever that she should ever do that shit. Because for one, she's all she's mid-maxing. The people that are doing the all meat diets, the people that are doing like, you know, uh, um, carnivore diets and things such and so forth, these like very, very niche diets are people at the end game people that are like very very knowledgeable about shit they're gonna you know they're trying to mid max as much as possible and that's fine if you want to do that if you're doing it responsibly for somebody like amber who literally can't even stop eating in a general speaking sense you're all you're doing is just i don't know restricting shit when you're not supposed to and you're just gonna rebound even faster you don't even have a good record of not eating so why the fuck are you trying to go for like the hardest bracket you're not gonna do it okay you're just not so I would always recommend for somebody like Amber to just continue eating what she's eating, but just do it in a better way. Like try to substitute foods out and then lower the calories. So gave me this like lymphatic massage. It freaking hurt. It okay. hurts so bad, but it's something that she said that I need to try to do daily. What um, doctors is she going to, man? It's like witch doctors or something like that that are telling her to do this shit. Like who's, who, who is, who is coaching this woman? Um, it's a lot of massaging near lymph nodes, okay. um, but it's supposed to help move fluid throughout your body. So you're not retaining so much fluid and but I'm i think most of this shit is probably bullshit somebody can correct me in the comment section if you know anything about this like moving liquids around your body i'm sure that there are plenty of massages that could maybe expedite things or make things a little bit better for you but i don't think that there's some kind of like go into a particular place that is going to significantly improve your condition through the practice of somebody touching your body and doing something in a certain way I think most of the time when people think that, they want an easy solution. If there's not an easy solution, you're just going to have to do it. You're just going to have to deal with it. You're just going to have to go through it. It's like the people that want to lose weight and they they see on TikTok somebody like, oh, I lost fucking 40 pounds in two weeks because I drank some fucking green tea or some shit like that. You're not losing weight. You're not losing 40 pounds of weight by drinking green tea and changing nothing else in your diet. I'm sorry that you're pooping more. Sure, that's cool. I'm glad you're pooping more, but... Ultimately, you're not losing you're not losing weight by adding something extra to your diet. That's not how that works. You're gonna have to put in the hard work. I'm sorry to say it. There is no easy way about it. I'm not going to these specialists to just hear them tell me to do something and me not do it. I'm not getting these tests and I'm not seeing these doctors just for them to tell me something and me not listen to them. No, I'm going to better myself. Cool. Awkward.
what is currently motivating you to lose weight and it's pretty simple it's like i don't want any more health complications due to my weight and I how did she make it this far in her life going you would think right this is recent this is a recent video right this this video the video we're watching right here you would think that the, the cancer you would think the cancer would be like the wake up call like that's a pretty that's a pretty fucking crazy thing to get cancer and then go not losing weight right you would think that would be the reason why she lost weight but she didn't which is crazy but now she, she's saying that she's gonna lose weight which is I mean, if you didn't lose it then, what the fuck are you going to do now? This is not even like a, an extreme scenario. Are you going through some kind of major health complication right now? What is it, right? Why now out of all times when you're 33 years old and you've went through all these trials and tribulations with being fat, but now you're deciding to lose weight? I just, I don't know. I'm going to call bullshit. I don't want to die anytime soon. Like I want to live for at least another 40 years. And I know that, I mean, look, how old is Amber right now? It's 30, 30 years old, 33 years old, 40 years on top of that. So she's going to be 80, I mean, um, 70, um, 40, 50, 60. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, it's possible she can make it to 70. But, dude, I mean, the amount of just destructive forces on her body on a daily basis and the fact that she's maintained this weight for, I think, going on a decade at this point, you cannot, I'm not saying it's not possible that she can make it to 70. If she made some serious lifestyle decisions and she actually was proactive about it and consistent, she might be able to make it to something around that, but... I mean, dude, this is why I always stress you got to make sure that your health is good because any kind of fuck up is going to like not is not going to be good in the long term. Like just because you feel OK now, just because you're not dealing with problems now doesn't mean 10, 15 years from now, you're these shits are not going to crop the, the, the problems that you're feeling. The problems that you, you've induced when you were in your 20s are not going to crop up when you're in your late 30s. No, that sounds crazy. Um, because people my size, we don't live that long. Why are yeah. you open to Ozempic again, even if it can mess with your gallbladder? Because rapid weight loss, yo-yo dieting, losing a large amount of weight, all of that messes with your gallbladder regardless. And I'm the queen of yo-yo dieting, you guys know that. I want to lose a large chunk of weight. So it's like, my gallbladder has had issues in the past already due to the yo-yo dieting and to the weight loss. So it's like, what's another thing? What a wild sure. statement to make. And where was this attitude when she was actually on it? And I mean, I understand what she's saying. Like she's already doing fucking damage. So why not add in a little bit extra damage? I would always, I would always err on the side of doing as little damage as humanly possible when you do anything. But given the fact that Amber is literally <laughs> like every day, she's like, I guess expediting the lifespan. And she's already like doing a lot of damage to her internal organs. Ha, <sighs> I mean, dude, anything at this point, I guess, dude. I would never advocate for somebody to do Ozempic or anything like that unless they, it was like a drastic change in them. Like if you, I would always recommend people to do it organically. Try to lose weight as best as you can organically. But for somebody like Amber, dude, I mean, anything at this point, right, dude? Anything. I just hope she does it in a responsible way. Successfully losing weight. If I'm being supervised by a doctor and they're like, you know what? Which doesn't matter, dude. I hear Amber talk about being supervised by doctors so often. I mean, I've literally seen a video of her telling, telling me that a doctor told her to one pound a month is going to be sufficient. One pound a month. That means by in two years, she's going to lose 24 pounds. Two. What are, you, what are we doing right now? All right. 24 months, two years, and you lose 24 pounds. Oh, oh, and outrageous. Oh, so good. So you went. So, so you went. From 575 to 600 pounds, basically, right? Oh my God. Yes, I know that was upwards. You think Amber loses weight? Fuck no. When I first started Ozempic, which is something my doctor recommended to me, she actually had a few um, weight loss medicines that I could use. And I chose Ozempic out of like the three. She, you know, obviously. She just gave you like a, like it was just around a table and she was like, pick a pill. And you were like, that one this is the one that's that's wow that doctor is really good do they all do the same thing or is it just like put your hand in a fucking hat and just pick whatever one out dude what the fuck what kind of doctors does amber have obviously she knows my health and my health history and i told her you know i was diagnosed with gallstones almost a decade ago and it's so crazy how amber has no eyebrows man especially in an era where you need to have thick eyebrows like obviously i'm that girl with the eyebrows when it comes to the thickness um, but she does have a good hairline, so I guess she can make up for it. And she does draw her eyebrows on a little bit. It's always a little weird, though, because I remember I went into, like, a Walgreens, and there was a black lady behind a counter, and I was in line, but I wasn't looking. I was, like, looking down at my phone at the time or whatever, and I was next in line. She was like, come over, 
Lord, come over here, honey. Let me take care of you, right? And then I walked over. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. And then I, like, I looked at her forehead and I saw her eyebrows, which were dark, thick. And then I was like, oh, I'm just whatever this. And I looked back up, dude, and I saw a reflection. Like I saw like a beam of light. Like it hit my eye and I was like, ah! And it was her because she had, it was all, it was all drawn on. She didn't have actual hair follicles on her eyelids. I mean, her eyebrows anymore. And I see that quite a bit nowadays where people just don't even have eyebrows and they just draw them on. I don't know if you're just like follically challenged or if people nowadays don't have eyebrow genetics anymore or we're just like slowly but surely turning into like alligators. But why do so many people not have eyebrows anymore? Are you just shaving them off just to draw them back on? How does this work exactly? Can somebody let me know? From rapid weight loss, I lost 89 pounds. Um, I lost in six months. Rapid weight loss is considered one to two pounds a week. So I got gallstones from my rapid weight loss. You know, my gallbladder was just under attack constantly. Never got bad enough. For in six months, she lost a lot of weight. I don't think that's, eh, I mean, it's not the best, dude, but she does have a lot of weight to lose. I need to get surgery. And I always found it so strange that it had to reach a certain stage before you got surgery because the pain was already just tearing me apart. Like I would rock back and forth. Like she was like, do you show any more signs of it? Like when's the last time you had an attack? And it made me realize, wow, I actually haven't had a gallstone attack. I've had maybe like one or two in the last three plus years. She was like, well, that means they could have gotten better. She was like, let's put you on Ozempic. And if you ever feel like you have any, you know, gallbladder problems, you need to tell me and you're going to have to get off of it. And I said, okay. And she was like, have you ever had pancreas problems? And I said, unfortunately, yes. She trusted that I would tell her if I had any issues. I hope so, dude. You're going to your doctor for a reason. If you're not telling your doctor what the actual problems are, then how the hell are they going to solve the issue? Like doctors are not mind readers, right? It's like arguing with a girl. Man, I remember one time I was dating this girl and I guess I had said something to her. I still don't even know what I said to her to this day. But I remember I was hanging out with her and she was upset with me the entire day. Like she wasn't talking to me, but keep in mind, like we, we still, she still wanted to hang out, but we were hanging out and then like the entire day she was like super quiet. She wasn't trying to talk about anything. And I was like, um, are you, are you upset? She was like, I don't know. Am I? And I was like, uh, uh, maybe are you upset or like, are you just like going through something right now? Are you like depressed? Like did somebody kick your dog? Like what happened? And she was like, Mm, nothing. I was like, did I say something? And she was like, did you, David? Did you say something? And I was like, I don't know. I, did I? When did I say, like, recently? Like, did I say something that was, uh, like, incorrect? Or, like, was it on the phone? Like, today? Did I say something? Mm, if you don't know, then I'm not going to tell you. What the fuck? Like, what am I supposed to do in that scenario, dude? Like, why are you being so passive aggressive and, are, like, not telling me what the actual issue is instead of, like, addressing what the problem is? I don't know. I could have said a whole bunch of shit. I'm, I'm fucking insane when it comes to like conversations and things like that. I could offend you just passively, but she didn't tell me. And I was just sitting there for the entire day. Just like, you know, like, all right, what do I, what do you fucking, what do I, what do I, why are we even here? If you're just like, like ridiculously upset with me, I'm not a mind reader. And most people are not mind readers. Communication. And the same thing could be said here. And I did tell her. And it was around the same time that they noticed from my CT scans that I have sludge in my gallbladder. Sludge. So my doctor told me, okay, you need to stop taking those. Empties. Sludge is a crazy ass word, dude. I've not heard somebody say sludge since like the 90s when they used to talk about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, dude. You remember that old movie where they, they, they wore like the whole complete suits or whatever? I think there was, they called the stuff that the, the turtles were taking. I think they said that was sludge. Or something like that. I don't know, man. But that's crazy to have sludge in your body. Um, can we just give it one more chance? Can we wait until I'm in pain one more time? I don't know why people are... Can you imagine your doctor going like, listen, dude, you got sludge in your body. And then you're going, ah, oh, I mean, yeah, I guess. But like, so what? Like, that is sludge. Like, that's nothing, dude. Like, whatever, right? I mean, I'll just keep doing it. I'll just keep doing it. It's not a big deal. It's just, it's just a little bit of sludge, right? Still a little... If a doctor told me that I had sludge in <laughs> in my fucking body, be like, what are you talking about? Like, if my fucking body's like a gutter? What do you, why, why, where did that come from? What? Yeah, whatever the fuck I can do to get rid of the sludge. I don't think that's like a, I don't think it's supposed to be my fucking body, dude. Or, you know, constantly just like trying to tell me that my doctor's wrong. 
as much as I wanted to continue Ozempic. It's just like what? You were trying to convince yourself that your doctor was wrong. Your doctor is telling you that you have some kind of like weird fucking. You you have a foreign entity in your body, some kind of alien or whatever that's like roaming around in your in your body, and you're going. You might be wrong. Like it's just a little bit of sludge. It's just a little bit of gooiness. A little bit of, di di you know, a little bit of disgustingness, whatever. I've eaten sludge before. The very bottom of the McDonald's bag, I was, I'll drink that shit up. Whatever the fuck it is. I don't care. My cup holder sometimes. I unveil, when I lift up the with the Gatorade cup, there's some, there's some kind of gooey slitch right there. And I just, oh. You have to, like, move your throat a little bit to get it down. That is not that kind of sludge. Not that kind of sludge. Like, I know I need to just follow what the doctors are telling me to do at this point. My body is currently failing me without me even doing anything. Yeah. I'm not gonna- Yo, I mean, you are complete. doing something. Let's be honest here for a second. If you're big as fuck like this and you're obese, you are doing something to make your body fail you. It's amazing how durable the human body is. Anytime I want to, like, you know, anytime I want to look at somebody that's, like, an inspirational story, I always look at Amber because- Think about this. Can you imagine being 500 pounds for literally a decade and having your body continue to strive? You know what I'm saying? Granted, I mean, she's going through a lot of problems, but she's still alive. That is a fucking amazing achievement, dude. That is crazy to me, dude. That's an inspirational story right there. You know, HBO special type thing. Just because of my gallbladder. Do you think the therapy you did for weight loss surgery helped you? Because as a viewer of eight years, I have noticed a huge positive change in you. I also noticed it as well. The therapy definitely helped. And it's almost as if like my whole weight loss surgery journey was just like meant to happen for that very reason. And getting diagnosed with PTSD and also BPD, it opened my eyes Damn, tremendously. And People I mean, nowadays get diagnosed like every five seconds with shit, dude. Damn. Like, would she have like a checklist of things that you had? BPD, like PTSD, fucking all that shit. She was just, oh, yeah, got that, got that, got that. Oh. Uh, skinny legend? Nah, don't got that one. To like rationally be like, okay, so this is the reason you're. I like the nails, way. dude. I think the nails look good. Can we talk about the nails for a second? I'm able to like wrap. That's her color. That's her color, dude. I like that. I like those lime green nails, dude. She does. She, those are nice. And I like the length of them. They're a little bit concerning for me, but the color is nice. Rationally be like, okay, so this is the reason you're this way. Now it's your choice to like find that rational side of you. The question is, what is the worst habit that you do when you're in love with someone? So not only. I think it's adopting, if I'm gonna, okay, just from my limited knowledge from knowing Amber for only a few years, which is crazy to say, I think from the lore that I do know, I think the most toxic trait Amber has is enveloping herself so much with that other person. I think she gives too much of herself away to the other person. When you're in a relationship, you should still retain your autonomy in the sense of like, you are your own person and they are their own person. and. Every once in a while, you guys bond. You guys do something. You live together, obviously, if that's what you want to do. And you're you're communicating. You're doing stuff together and stuff like that. But you're still, overall, your own person. Amber kind of embodies the other person. She always looks at the other person and adopts so much or almost all the traits of that other person. And when it's somebody with a big personality, for instance, like Destiny, it's like on display heavily. But with somebody more of like a conservative um, type of relationship I see that she takes advantage of them and maybe because she's not getting I feel like Amber needs like um a really combative a really somebody that's gonna like battle her if that makes any sense like somebody that's going to push back against her right um that's what man if if anybody ever asked me like what kind of girls I'm into I'm into women that are like super super um aggressive like very aggressive women women that are gonna like challenge me that are gonna not you know what I'm talking about like I'm not I'm not a big fan of arguments for nothing but I want somebody that's going to joke around with me, somebody that will push back. Like we can have these little like mini arguments that are just, you know, you know what I'm talking about, like sideways, not not anything, not anything super aggressive or anything like that. I feel like that's something that Amber needs. I feel like because she's so um passively smug and all this other stuff, I feel like she needs somebody to put her in her place. Or not put her in her place, but somebody that she can have somebody to, to push back against the bullshit that can even her out a little bit. Because she embodies too much of the person that she's with, and when she can't, she takes advantage of them. Do I have BPD? The question is, what is the worst habit that you do when you're in love with someone? So not only do I have BPD- How often are you in love with somebody, dude? Can somebody, right, answer this down below in the comment section. How many times have you been in love with somebody? For me, once. One time. And I thought I was in love with somebody else, but I wasn't until I realized I was in love with this other person. But I have massive 
massive anxious attachment issues. Like yeah. when I'm in love with someone, they become my everything. I knew it, dude. See, I haven't watched this video. I'm gonna keep it a buck. I have not watched this video. This is me raw reacting to this. I knew this shit would be it. I knew it, dude. She does have a it's so annoying to be around somebody that needs you for everything. Somebody that needs you to answer their questions, to be there for them right now. Somebody that they can they they can take all, all their attention for. That is not good, okay? Sometimes I need to do stuff. Sometimes you need to do stuff. Sometimes I just don't have time for you. Sometimes I have to do other things like this, right? And it's cool to do stuff together. Like you want to watch the new season of Love is Blind. You want to go out to eat. You want to go to the movies. You want to walk in the park. Fine. But you cannot expect that other person to be at your beck and whim constantly. And this is what I go back to, like be your own autonomous human being. I'm doing shit. I can't hit, I can't, I can't pick up the phone. I'm doing shit. We can't go out right now. I'm doing shit. No, I don't want to talk to you right now. I'm talking to these other people. I can't, right? Be your own human being. For Amber, I really think that she has that problem. She cannot be her own person when she's in a relationship. Massive anxious attachment issues. Like when I'm in love with someone, they become my everything. And I know it's because of the BPD. I know it's because It's of like, you know, look, if you have issues like this, if you have chronic mental problems and such like this, like BPD and all this other stuff, it's fine that you have those things, but to sit there and use that as an excuse for the reason why you act the way that you do, it just comes off very, very disingenuous to me because, again, it's like you're acknowledging what the problem is, and instead of adjusting or trying to do anything to try to alleviate these problems, you're just feeding into it more, or you're giving yourself more excuses to act the way that you are, and it just comes off as like really, really fucking bad, really cringy. Dude, work on yourself. If you can acknowledge what the problem is, work on the problem you can't just expect people to just be okay with the fact that you have these issues and then you just go but i got bpd so like it's just the way it is no that's not the way it should be go get some fucking help that's terrible with someone they become my everything and i know it's because of the bpd i know it's because of the anxious attachment so it gets so bad it's to the point where it's like my emotions my feelings my thoughts the way my day goes etc etc it's all based on the way that they are treating me terrible man One that's so bad dude oh my god you need to be resilient on yourself. Like don't, you cannot be using other people as a place to get your satisfaction or a way to eva elevate yourself. Like how you feel better in a day is because somebody told you they care about you or love you or gave you a compliment. That's terrible. You should feel good being yourself and then that sh like them giving you a compliment should be like you're at 100 percent. that should just move you up by like 20 percent. you know what i'm talking about and then you get like that mm, yes they care about me and they think i'm hot and they thought my shoes were cool right that's awesome but you shouldn't be utilizing that as the way you get to your baseline that's not a good thing small change or tweak in tone or words can literally feel like the end of the world that's not good to me. Dude. That's i never understood why I always thought I was just dramatic. That's what I was called, you know, my whole life to, in relationships. It's just like, you're dramatic. Why, why are you so irrational? Why do you act this way? Like, you're just being crazy. Like, I wonder if YP ever said these things to Amber. Probably. She was the most independent of all of her exes. Yeah. And this definitely seems like something that could have attributed to the breakup. A lot of people, when they go into relationships, I see that they want a person like that. Like, I've talked to many people that they go, I just want somebody that's obsessed with me. I want somebody that's going to be like always there for me. Somebody that's going to just help me out with my life and things like that. But when they get in situations, when they are with a person like that, they don't want it. It's just like, it's never good, okay? The person that you're with should be able to live their own lives and you're just something that elevates them. Like the icing on the cake, right? They should not be the entire cake for you. You have to have your own ways of doing shit, dude. It's super annoying to be with somebody that constantly wants to talk to you, that constantly has to be around you, that constantly wants to do this or whatever the fuck. Like sometimes, right? If you're just like living your life, maybe you just want to play a video game. Maybe you just want to go out and chill with other people. Maybe you want to talk to your friends on the phone. Maybe you want to do all this other stuff, but that person is going to continuously nag at you. They're going to continuously tell you that, oh, you should, you don't give me enough time. You don't ever talk to me. Dude, you know, sometimes you are giving that person some uh, like really good time or you're, you're devoting a lot of time to them, but they don't understand that the time that you're giving them in any other context is sufficient, but in the context that they're living in, it's never going to be enough. It's always going to be, I need more, I need more, I need more, I need more. It's never a good thing. And I feel like Not it's like that for that, Amber. We saw this obsession even after the breakup. Amber would constantly message and call YP and talk about her in vlogs to the point where YP told her to leave her alone. True. Destiny and Becky have also talked about how clingy, needy, and controlling Amber was. Yeah. Now that I know the reason, it's like, wow, I have BPD. That's why I'm doing this. Amber just shouldn't be in relationships, dude. What I what, like, I feel like 
because the way that she is and she's not looking for help at all, it seems like, and she's just kind of like giving herself excuses. What I think I would recommend, the advice I would give her is to work on herself, stay out of a relationship for probably a year at least, because like, it seems like she has a hard time moving from, like she always has a person to move to, is what I gathered. Like, I don't think she's been outside of a relationship for more than a few months. And she's always in the next one after like a few weeks, right? So I think that I'd probably recommend her to stay out of a relationship, work on herself, be autonomous for as long as she can, because she relies on them so heavily. I mean, the Becky horror stories of her literally saying, hey, um, you know, Amber, if she didn't wash, if I didn't wash Amber, if I didn't cook Amber, if I didn't do this for Amber, she wouldn't have done it for herself. That is a- absolutely ungodly levels of terrible, not good at all. Amber should not be seeding over responsibilities that she has for herself to another person because she just doesn't feel like doing it. That is gross. That is absolutely terrible. And you know, what's really crazy when she broke up with Beck, um, when she broke up with Becky, right? Dude, it was like, what, two, three weeks, a month later that she was with Wipey? Dude, that's crazy. Amber should not be moving that quickly. How long was she with Becky for? Years? And she was with Wipey for like under a year? Dude, that's crazy to me. Amber has a real big problem with relationships. Like, it's cool. Like, it's, it's some people just have no problems getting in a relationship, and it's not always a good thing. Because, like, if you're always in a relationship, and it's, like, as toxic as it is here... It's, it, what that what that just tells me is like you have a problem with being alone. You don't actually want to be with somebody. You just don't want to be alone. So you just take anything you can get. That's gross. Work on yourself. Don't make it this like a, a a thing that you need to be in a relationship with somebody. That's not a good thing. So say someone I'm in a relationship with usually messages me every morning at 9 a.m. and says good morning to me. Terrible. That's something I'm used to. That's, That's something- not a good thing, dude. I, what are you like fucking 15 years old? If you're an adult, I don't got time to mess. What what time? What time did she say that you have to message her by, dude? What is this? Just me every morning at 9 a.m. And- okay, look, dude. If you got to go to work or you're busy with something or maybe just fucking asleep because you work at night or whatever, right? No, I'm not going to message you, okay? I don't know what to tell you. I don't have time for that shit. Ah! Okay, not even just for me. I think most people that become adults are okay with the fact that somebody is not going to message them good morning in the morning. And I don't think that means that they're a lesser of a boyfriend or a girlfriend because they don't do that. I don't even care. Like, why does that even matter? What? You should care more about what they what they can do for you. The communication. How often are they there to listen to how you feel? How, how you know, if they're able to help you with your emotions. I don't know. Maybe they take you fucking dancing, ice skating. Maybe they cook you a nice meal. Dude. Wake up, a good morning text message, dude. Unless you're like 15 years old, it shouldn't matter. And says good morning to me. That's something I'm used to. That's something that I expect. So if it comes 9.30, I start to think they hate me. Terrible. They want nothing to do with me. Amber has a mature definition of what relationships are be li- uh, should be like. And she's been in a relationship before for a very long time. Like she was Becky for three or four years. That's a long time to be with somebody. And she still thinks like this. I, I It's like some people just never grow up. And I feel like some people should just never be in relationships because they have like a fundamental misunderstanding of how people should actively be in relationships. They're cheating on me. I'm not gonna lie. It would probably start happening around 9.03. See, I used to think like that. Like I used to be in relationships with people and I used to think if this person is not texting me at this time, they're probably cheating on me. They're probably sucking on another guy. My dick is not big enough. Obviously, I don't have that problem, but sometimes, you know, you feel a little bit insecure. My dick's not big enough. They're, you know, whatever. You're thinking about all these things that are going through your head. But as I've gotten older, as I've had more relationship experience, now I don't care. If somebody doesn't text me back, I'm not intrinsically thinking that they're cheating on me. I just think they're probably busy. They're probably doing something. They're probably just whatever, right? People are busy, dude. Everybody has something going on. So I don't hold it against that person for not texting me back or whatever it may be. Um, because that's not, I don't, they don't owe me that. Right. And then also it doesn't matter if somebody cheats on you or not. Okay. Hear me out. If somebody does cheat on you, obviously you don't want that to happen, but if they do, why does it matter if you're putting so much thought into whether or not they may or may not be thinking of wh- whether they may or may not be cheating on you? It doesn't change it regardless. If they're going to cheat, they're going to cheat. Um, so, I mean, the only thing that you can actually ask for is hopefully they tell you or you find out because you don't want to be with somebody that's a cheater. But again, you shouldn't be putting so much thought into whether or not this person's cheating on you or not cheating on you. That's one of two things. It's either that person is untrustworthy or you have a poor mental capacity when it comes to relationships. It's one of those two things. 3 a.m. So then what that would cause me to do is text them 
why haven't you talked to me? Is everything okay? Like multiple, multiple texts. Because not only is that my BPD being like triggered. It's just you being immature, Amber. I mean, I'm, sh I'm sure it has a lot to do with your BPD. But o overwhelmingly, dude, Amber is just very, very immature of a person, dude. I'm just seeing it fully on display right now. But it's also my anxious attachment being triggered. What show did you audition for last year? So I am friends with someone from a thousand pound best friends. I mean, we know it's Megan because they publicly interact. We thought it would be a good idea for me to be on that show. Cool. So she talked to the producers and they're like, you know what? Let's Can you imagine being so fat that you're actually thinking about going on a fat show? Let's give her an interview. So I had an interview. Feline was my girlfriend at the time and she was 100% supportive. We knew that we were going to have to actually move to a different state to be a part of that show. And we were both willing to do it. We were willing and ready. I did the interview. It actually went amazing but i never heard back from them and i'm not they gonna lie to you. you this happens a lot <laughs> i have been interviewed for a few weight loss shows crazy and it always goes really good they like hype me up and they make me feel really good but they never call me back they probably see how destructive of a person amber is during the interview process and things like that because like ultimate amber you know people have told me i always ask right i always ask people why is amber like, why do people not like Amber, right? It, like, what, what, what traits about her are so incredibly toxic that, like, puts people off to her? And people have told me she's immature, she's condescending, she's super smug, she has all these bad traits. And I just don't see it. But I see it now. Like, I real deal see it now. And she tells on herself so willingly. And she has, like, she thinks when she's talking. Like, she's being honest, right? She's talking about all these things. And I think she doesn't think of these things as bad traits. Like, all the things that she said so far, I think she actually thinks that these are just character traits. Like, these are okay things to have. Now, don't get me wrong. Everybody has traits about them that are not good. Like, things that are obviously not the best things to have. Like, I'll be fully okay with telling you guys, when I'm in relationships, I'm not all there sometimes. Like, sometimes I don't want to talk to you. Sometimes I just want to do my own thing. I like my alone time. And also, when we get into arguments, I'm probably going to back away from that situation because I don't like being in arguments, especially with the person that I'm with, because I'm going to call you a bitch. I'm going to call you a terrible fucking person. You're fucking gross. You're stupid. You're just, you know what I'm talking about? Like, I have an issue with these things. And what I'll do is, like, I'll back myself up from those situations. I'll, I'll like take hours or even a day or two to like process this shit because it takes me a while to like really go through my emotions and things like that and sometimes i don't think it's beneficial to be with you while i do those things because i'm probably going to be super toxic in that in that time frame right so i fully acknowledge that these things are terrible not good traits but ultimately it's just what it is for me because like i don't know maybe i have like some kind of fucking mental illness or something like that but i'll fully acknowledge this with you that i'm gonna have these problems and i'm always forthcoming too when i go in relationships with people like listen i'm gonna be busy a lot i do a lot of things and i'm, I'm like super always productive on things like this i have a lot of shit i gotta do with my family and all this other stuff like i may not be there all the time and the amount of times i tell people that and i go into relationships and i tell them also about like i i withdraw myself when we get to arguments whenever i tell people that it's always a surprise when these things come up as things, right? And it's always like, oh, you know, you don't make enough time for me. You don't do this. You don't do that. I'm like, I know. I, I fucking told you this, though. Like, you straight up told me that you were okay with that, but now you have a problem with it. And I understand, like, in practicality, things are different than when I just tell you. And maybe you think that it's going to be different. It's not. It's not. I don't know what to tell you. And for Amber um, to excuse her bad behavior with that, it's not a good thing, dude. You should acknowledge them at the bare minimum, obviously, but to excuse them in the way that she does is <sighs> terrible. They never even tell me sorry. These shows don't- Why the fuck would they tell you sorry, okay? That's like, if you're, if you're like, what she wants is like being hired for a job and then the job fires you and then they call you up like, so yeah, make sure you come in tomorrow to drop off all your shit. Make sure you do carts too, bitch. Like, no, bro, you don't owe that job anything. After they fire you, get the fuck out. So the same thing with, like, when you break up with somebody, one of the things I feel like a lot of people should understand, nobody owes you closure. No, if you break up with somebody or something happens, fuck you, we broke up. I don't have to discuss why we broke up or how you're feeling about these things or, you know, all these things that you're just, like, going through your head. I don't care. They shouldn't care. Nobody owes you closure. Nobody owes you extra work. It's not how that works. Turn her down. She turns them down. She didn't want to be on my 600 pound life because she didn't want to do the shower scene. She's turned down Nick and- What shower scene? Somebody let me know in the comment section. That sounds crazy. There's for collabs because she was embarrassed of her- She turned down- Why would she ever turn down the, the, the avocado dude? Why would you ever, dude? I would fucking do a collab with that dude every day of my life. What are you talking about? 
size, and just recently she turned down that new Doctor Now show, she claimed it was because they told her she didn't weigh enough, but turns out she was actually telling the producer that she was losing weight on her own. Okay. Hello! She's made a video about her and said that she was not big enough for the show. She told me she was losing weight, which is amazing. I actually haven't responded yet. Thanks for reminding me. Okay, so she turned you down, not the other way around. It's still an open conversation. Why? What's, what is she posting? She said that she's received messages from you and a message from you that said that she needs people to be 550 pounds or higher, closer to the 600 pound mark because the show is supposedly 516 pounds. Does it heavy enough? She's not heavy enough. Okay. This is recent. This is really recent. Okay, hold on. Let me move myself so you can see this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You can see right here. See? A conversation between producer on 1524. So this is this is a recent thing. But yeah, it was a thousand pound best friends. And I don't know. It just would have been it would have been great. Like sure. I, I really do feel that. Do you consider yourself a sexual person? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Ugh. I would consider myself to actually be a very sexual person, Oof. especially like if we vibe in that way every day. Um, I'm a daily type of girly pop. So okay. is wifey number one? Dude, that's, that's, I mean, I always like am super concerned when fat people want to have sex. Amber's like 500 pounds. I have watched obese pornography before. I don't recommend it for anybody. And I didn't do it recreationally. Like, I'm not going on like the hub and going like, yeah fat people having sex the problem with that is like when you're watching it you don't even know if it's gay porn it could realistically be gay porn because you don't see anything you don't know if this is like you see butt obviously but you don't see penis and because like how can you it's like being covered up by like this obesity right and half the time the people are just sitting down and they're just having a conversation about what they're going to do to each other and i guess that's the wind up and eventually when they execute they have to like warm themselves up. So they have to like touch on their knees and like warm up their legs a little bit because they're, you know, they're sitting down. They don't know how they're going to get up. So they're just doing this and they're going like, oh, it's going to be so great. I can't wait to impregnate you with all my gravy and it's going to be crazy. It's going to be awesome. Right. And they're doing this and eventually they go. Right. They stand up because the amount of pressure on their knees is like agonizing for them. It's like probably sandpaper rubbing together on the kneecaps. Right. And the same thing for, I don't even know if it's a woman or not. It could be gay porn. I could be watching gay porn this whole entire time. And then when they eventually do have sex, it's just people laying on the bed on top of each other, just like, just gyrating. That's it. So I don't know. Um, I hope Amber has good fulfilling sex. If that's what she's, if that's what she wants. I don't know what she's doing exactly. I don't want to know, but it's probably gross and greasy. One, the same as wifey number two. Wifey number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten are all the same person. So in case you're new here and wonder why Amber is so disliked, it's because of things like this. She doxed YP, then blamed it on her audience, and then she had to come up with this huge law that she had a new girlfriend and YP was no longer. Her audience questioned her about it, and they were constantly told that Wifey, YP, Jade, Alex, Feline were all different people. When she gets desperate for content, all the laws come out. <laughs> Do you use toys with yourself dude i don't want to fucking why is this even coming up actually i'm interested or with partners yes i do Woo! that's crazy dude that's a revelation i mean you have to really honestly speak in here dude i don't i mean lesbians right dude it's like sure you could be a lesbian and not do use sex toys i've seen it before but dude you're telling me no anal beads no vibrators dude no corn shaped dildos fuck off me dude you know you're using some crazy shit you kidding me dude I've even used sex toys, not on myself or anything like that. Fuck that. But, uh, you know, I've used sex toys before, dude. Anal beads, vibrators and things such and so forth. I don't know, phone books, whatever you can find, honestly. But the point I'm making is, like, obviously, if you're a lesbian, you're going to have to use some utility items, double-ended dildos, dude, um, bad dragon sex toys, whatever, bro. I don't fucking know what, it, what lesbians use. I don't know. But um, there's you're limited, right? Because you don't have as much women are a little bit more complicated than dudes because if like if i just wanted to have sex it would just be like uh you know grab my 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 schlong and then just like up and down i'm good right but for women it's like i always look at it as like uh adjusting an old school tv with an antenna and every time it's different so it's like you know what do i gotta do this time right it's 45 minutes of like warming you up 
and you know maybe i gotta put my mouth on things that i probably don't want to at that particular moment in time and it's like really disconcerting because things leak and i don't even know what i'm even doing sometimes and i'm just hoping that you'll tell me if i'm doing something wrong and not looking like an idiot because if I'm like, for instance, oral sex for guys, it's like very, it's like, I've never heard a dude even say that he had a bad oral sex job before. But for women, I've heard that copious amounts of times. But it's like, what am I even doing? I just like fucking run my face into it. And then just, you know, look up at you. Hopefully like, is this good? Like, am I doing the right thing? No. What do I do? What do I, how do I do this exactly? Like, what do you want? And then it's like difficult. So I don't know. But it's probably, I mean, I don't know. Do women know more than men? I don't fucking know, dude. See, this is why we think she sends these to herself, because who the hell is asking her these types of questions? I, mean, I don't think any, uh, if I'm being honest with you for a second, I think people are probably asking her this question. I, I think that people are, are genuinely asking her this question. I don't know why you wouldn't, dude. Let's be honest. People have asked me questions like that before, you know, what, you know, whatever, dude. be an open person. At least Amber has the ability to answer honest questions. Tie me up, uh, put my panties in my mouth. Whoa, whoa, Amber, Amber. What? Put your panties on your mouth? Damn, dude. That's... <laughs> Whoa, Amber. I didn't know it was like that. That's insane, dude. I don't even know what that shit would even look like. What does it take? 45 minutes to even take them off? A large... What kind of rope are you using? You got to use like that industrial strength like chains or whatever. Go home to go to Home Depot. Just get those big ass chains. Portion of 2019. If not the whole 2019 where I literally couldn't shower. Yeah, so that you know what, man? You uh, How dare you? How dare you tell me this? How dare you bring this video back up in the... Uh, the how, when I'm thinking about the sexual abilities of Amber Lynn? Because now, like, you're totally right, dude. Like, if you're spending a whole year or even more of no showering and you're telling me you're a super sexual person, my goodness, that's probably... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's probably like an Indian sewer. Ah. Oh! Ah, that's got to be gross, dude. Oh, don't put that image in my head. It wouldn't even be frequently. Come do whatever you want to me because Shut up. I'm tied up. So there's nothing I can do about it. Oh, what really oh. happened during the weight loss surgery era? I came on my YouTube and I said, I can't get weight loss surgery until I don't bitch for a whole year. Then I had an appointment with my dietitian and she said, you're gonna come meet the surgeon because we need to talk to you about something. So long story short, hundreds and hundreds of people were emailing my surgeon, finding his Instagram and messaging him. They were contacting my surgeon's office through the phone, through messages. So how did people find out who my surgeon was? A reaction channel. How did that reaction channel find out who my surgeon was? Because I read maybe two sentences of an email that was sent to me by my surgeon's office. I'm going to keep it a buck with you, okay? If Amber is upset that reaction channels, quote unquote, doxed the surgeon or whatever, you cannot blame anybody but yourself given the fact that they cannot make reaction content without you. And if you are... Now, don't get me wrong. I do believe that these reaction channels do have a play in this. Obviously, I don't think anybody should be harassing anybody. But Amber made the content, dude. If, like, you made a video and you were like, guess what, guys? My grandmother lives here. And guess what else? Like, she's also, like, 97 years old. And she's, like, super cool person. Like, and she also goes to... Like, and then you publish that video. And then you're upset that reaction channels take that video and react to it. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? It's obvious that you 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 put out the original content. No. This reactor wanted to know so badly who my surgeon was that they faked wanting to get weight loss surgery just so they could get that email back to them to confirm who my weight loss surgeon was. And once they confirmed who my weight loss surgeon was, what did they do? They doxed him. Who is she talking about? Yeah. I never saw a reaction channel doxing a famous surgeon on their channel. Did you? Nope. If this is true, why isn't she calling this person out? She should be. I hate when people don't do this shit. Like, if just be honest, right? Keep it a buck. If you're going to call somebody out, don't be a bitch about it. Call them out. Just call them out. Be a real dude and call them out. Stop being a bitch. If you're going to say something, say it with your whole chest and just own it. Just own it, dude. She loves to name drop. In this video alone, she's discussed Yo Mama, Nikocado, Zachary Michael, and Megan from 1000 LB Best Friends. If she hates reaction channels so much, why not call him out? 
They said, this is Amber Lynn's surgeon. This is who he is. I'm pretty sure that doctors are not even supposed to, like, give out who their, like, patients are, right? Isn't that, like, a, a fine line that you're not supposed to, like, legal consequences for that? Well, my surgeon was Dr. Smith. Um, the okay. same surgeon who did Tammy Slayton surgery. He explained to me the type of messages and things that he was receiving. It was people saying how... Shouldn't I he be open to that, though? Like, if you're a big-name, famous doctor, and you're doing weight loss surgery for, you know, like, these big-name people, right? Tammy and all the 600-pound sisters. Um, wouldn't it be, like, obvious that this guy's probably going to get a whole bunch of people that are going to, like, say things to him? I don't know. I, I, I thought that was, like, a pretty common thing. I binged and I lie. So not only was I fighting for myself to get weight loss surgery, but I was fighting against hundreds of people because of a careless reaction channel. You're just like making excuses right now, dude. I I, I fully expect that doctor, if he's in the social media spectrum, to be getting hate, hate stuff and things such and so forth. Do you believe that hundreds of people were harassing this surgeon? Like she said, he's a very well-known surgeon yeah. who has performed on people way more well-known than Amber. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't see how this would have affected her surgery. I don't know if she's if the dude got doxxed because of this. That doesn't even make any sense. Because like this person is saying, dude, if you if you're getting like bigger people than Amber, why wouldn't no, that fan base be the one that doxxed him? That doesn't make any anyway. sense. So once the surgeon heard about all this and heard my side of the story, that is when things were changed. And he was like, you know what? A year is way too long. He explained to me that they've never been in this type of situation where like someone who was well known gets doxxed and now he's receiving all of these messages. And, and I feel like a lot of people might um, ask this. No, that's not the reason why I didn't end up getting weight loss surgery because I was still going through with it. Like I ultimately did not get weight loss surgery because I didn't feel ready. I didn't feel like I had the support that I needed. So why even bring up all that other bullshit as if it's like a prerequisite for the reason why you didn't get the surgery? to begin with because me and my ex my now ex we were just going through a lot at the time it was super expensive like thirty five thousand dollars like it was just like a lot of different Damn, things 35 g's for the weight loss surgery dude that's crazy really things that were 35 stacks like, is insane is right choice right now What's the biggest reason you aren't Damn. getting weight loss surgery? Lack of stability. When you get weight loss surgery, they said you're, you're gonna need someone. You're gonna need that one person like to really, really support you. And right now with this breakup, I don't want to put Fleen in that position oh, at all. Shit. Though I did not know that Fleen and I were not gonna be together when I made the choice not to get weight loss surgery because at the time, it was because I knew I wasn't ready. I have horrible relationship with food and I knew that I wasn't changed. 12 therapy sessions did not change 31 years Damn. of me turning to food Damn. during the hardest times of my life. Damn. So instead of the professionals telling me, mm, you're not ready, I just knew, I knew I wasn't ready. Okay. So why go through more heartbreak when I already knew that I wasn't ready? I mean, she's kind of right on that, dude. If you if you do go, the amount of times I've, dude, Boogie2988, right? When he got his weight loss surgery, he like leaned on his wife so OD. And eventually she divorced him right after he was well enough to take care of himself. And uh, that's tough, dude. Like to rely on somebody to such a degree like that, um, to put them in a position where they do have to rely on you like that. Like, don't get me wrong. If you have friends, family, things like that, things come up, things happen. You have to take care of people. I'm not saying you shouldn't do those things. But given the fact that Amber is in a position like this and she has to lean on somebody so heavily, dude, it's got to be a jarring experience to be somebody that's freshly in a relationship with you and going, hey, listen, I'm going to have this weight loss surgery. I need to rely on you completely. Uh, nah, I'm not detailed for that. I'm not trying to do that, dude. So I, I, I can understand why she wouldn't be down for that. Like, it's like common sense. A lot of you were telling me, Amberlynn, you're not ready, and you were right. So now that you are right, let's leave the weight loss surgery arc behind us. Craziness, dude. Just leave it all together? I guess, man. <laughs> all right, guys, we're going to end the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe sharing the video, all those things help me grow on the algorithm. So if you could do any of that stuff, that'd be great. If you want to become a member of my channel, you can. If you don't want to, that's fine too. I appreciate everybody that is a member. Thank you so much for everybody becoming a member. You guys are all beautiful, amazing, awesome, spectacular people. I completely love every single one of you and everybody that's subscribed. Thank you so much for subscribing. I'm almost 10,000 subscribers. So once we can get there, thank you so much. I appreciate every single one of you, everybody that's here currently. If you watch the video in its entirety, leave it down below by typing in ice, ice, baby. Boom, boom, ba -da doom boom, 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 ba -da doom boom. No, just ice. Because uh, I think ice is great. It's a fast, efficient way of consuming water. You can crunch it. I love crunching. Anything. I love crunching. I make toast for the very reason of having the crunch. I know it's efficient to not eat toast because you're just eating bread, basically. But I toast almost everything all the time whenever I'm eating bread because I love that crunch. That crunch. Just a light, 
just a light toast for like maybe a minute just to get that good crispiness when you get that that crunch down you know what i'm talking about but um i also want to remind you that you are a specimen a beautiful specimen of humanity that shirt you're wearing today looks very good by the way i like the way that shirt fits you wow it like perfectly contours to the shape of your body in ways that I, I don't even, how did you, how did they get like that? How do you, how did you manage to have this beautiful shirt fit you so well? You outrageously amazing, beautiful, spectacular person. Anyway, we're getting the video here. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, Twitter, Discord, and second channel. Those things are all going to be listed down there. If you want to join any of those places, feel free to do so. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Peace.